This is part two of a two-part lesson on maximum likelihood estimators. In this part, I'd like to do an example. We'll start with a discrete probability example. Suppose we have a communications device and it has an unknown error rate. We're going to assume that error rate is constant. What we want to do in this problem is estimate that error rate. The way we're going to do this is we are going to send a known digital signal through the communication device I'll call it a digital bit stream so it's just a stream of zeros and ones we're going to send that bit stream through the communication device and see if it's received correctly and determine if the bits are received correctly what this looks like then we have data coming in this is our known bit stream We'll put it in a transmitter. That signal will be sent and then received. And we'll measure the output. We'll compare output and input and count the errors prior the output with data and record errors. Now what's making this problem perhaps a little confusing is we got two sets of zeros and ones. The data is a bit stream of zero one. I don't want you to think about that. What I want you to think about is this comparison of the output data with the input data. What we'll do when I say re record the errors, if for example, if we send a zero and receive a one, we have an error. We'll record that error by saying y1 equals one. We'll record errors as a value of one. We'll, if we send a 1 and receive a 1, we did not have an error. We'll record that data as a 0. So again, what's confusing is the bit stream is 0 and 1 and the recording is 0 and 1. These 0 and 1s have nothing to do with the original 0 and 1s, only whether they were correct or not. 1 indicates error. zero indicates correct. That's what I want you to think about, those zeros and ones. All right, first step in finding the maximum likelihood is we need the probability mass function and we need some notation. I'll let R be the parameter, the unknown error rate. It's the parameter of our mass function. or error probability. This is then a binomial with one trial or a Bernoulli, the probability mass function, the probability of y sub i given this error rate is going to be that error rate raised to the y sub i times one minus r, one minus y sub i. This is perhaps one of the difficult parts of this problem is finding this probability mass function. Y can take on the value zero one. 
For example, probability that y sub i is equal to 0, given r, in other words, my bit was received correctly, is going to be r to the 0, 1 minus r to the 1 minus 0, to 1 minus r. It's the correct probability of it being correct. Probability that the data point is 1, that I had an error, would be r to the 1, 1 minus r to the 0, which is just r. So that is the correct probability mass function. Next step is to generate the likelihood function. I'm going to use the notation as we indicated in part 1 of this video series. r given y1, y2, all the way up to yn. Since these are independent and they come from the same distribution, I can multiply the mass function. I have r to the y1, 1 minus r to the 1 minus y1. That's my first probability mass function for the first observation. r y2, 1 minus r, 1 minus y2. And I'll continue for all n observations. We can shorten this notation by just recognizing if I have a common base, r to the y1 times r to the y2, I'm going to add exponents. So I'll get r to the sum i equals 1 to n of my y sub i's. Likewise, common base, 1 minus r, I'll add these exponents. When I add 1 to itself n times, I get n minus the sum of the y sub i's. And I'll drop the subscripts i equals 1 to n. We'll assume that we understand that. That's the likelihood. It's a, it's a product. What I want to do now is maximize this probability or this likelihood with respect to r. r can take on any value between 0 and 1. It's going to be a continuous function. For me, the easier way to do this, instead of having to worry about the product rule, is to take the natural log of the likelihood function because then it will become a sum and it's easy to take the derivative of sums. The log of a product is the sum of the logs. And again, as we learned last lesson, I can then bring the exponents down. Maximize this function. We're going to take the derivative of this log likelihood with respect to r. Natural derivative of natural log of r is just 1 over r. Again, I'll have 1 over 1 divided by 1 minus r. Then I get to use the product rule, take the derivative of this term in the denominator with respect to r, and that's a minus 1. I will then set this equal to 0 and solve for r. Bring the second term to the right hand side, which is convenient. Now I don't have to worry about that negative sign. I'll cross multiply. 1 minus r comes up on the left, r on the right. I'll distribute on both sides. Switch colors here to indicate that I'm going to cancel this term and this term on both sides. Simplifying again. Finally, r is the sum of the y sub i's over n. I'll put a hat on that to indicate it's an estimator, and that's really just y bar. 
our maximum likelihood estimator for the error probability is just the average number of errors y bar now I have to confirm that that's a maximum the fact that I said it equals zero could have been a minimum or an inflection you can use the second derivative or you can look at points on either side and I'll, I'll leave that for you to do on your own 